just want to get to the finish line knowing that I gave everything that I could and that I learned a lot about myself along the way, so. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. What's happening? I'm about to join you for your workout. Oh, yeah? Well, <laughs> Shocking. I'm not going to be working out. I'm going to be watching. But not like a creeper way. <laughs> <laughs> well, today is Mark's 10 days until Cocodona 250. So I'm officially in taper mode. But um, today's workout is going to be the 1,000 rep workout. A little bit of running intermixed but the intensity is going to be pretty low. But right now, I am actually trying out, um, I just got sent this new flavor of electrolytes. I am obsessed with BPN's strawberry, and I just got sent salted watermelon. So this is actually my first time trying it. I may or may not like this. So the best endorsements are the truthful ones. So you will see firsthand if I even... <laughs> Can you open it? <laughs> if I like this, so... The lemon is good, the strawberry is my favorite, and they just came out with this salted watermelon. Let's see how much I like this stuff. All right, well, during your workout, I'm gonna ask you some questions, so. Okay, so you're basically go going to be interrupting me on my workout. Kind of. That's not my favorite, but okay. <laughs> I'm gonna throw question number one at you right now while you're attempting to Taste. swallow that up. Mm -hmm. So, this whole build up to, um, Cocodona, you didn't have a coach. So uh -uh. how did you know how to program all your training and uh, workouts for a distance that you've never actually ran? Wow, that is a great and loaded question. By the way, this is super good. Yes, this will be in the crew box. So the way that I put this training plan together was I did a bunch of research, uh, read a bunch of race reports from people who have run these 200s. I listen to podcasts, watch every Cocodona 250 film that I could find on YouTube. Um, and then I also got really interested in what through hikers were doing as well. So um, started following some through hikers, read articles and found some information online about that. And then kind of took like what I already know to do in a, in a hundred mile training plan. And then of course my background as a coach and put all of that information on the table and just started to carve out a plan week by week. Now, because it, this was very experimental, um, you know, I, I did things that even in my mind sounded a little crazy. I mean, the jackpot ultra was one of them. <laughs> what I kept leaning toward was the fact that I'm gonna be running for days on end. So usually when I'm training for hundred, I'm not thinking about running for days on end and that's new territory for me. So the biggest factor that changed from 100 mile training to the 250 training was what I did on the weekends. And that was typically um, three day blocks of high volume training. And I did that multiple times um, throughout the buildup. So bright. <laughs> You're still here. <laughs> Put on your sunnies. It's so bright out. All right, a big question for a lot of people is um, the lack of sleep during the race. Or are you planning on sleeping during the race or did you train, you know, for lack of sleep? <laughs> Gosh, I think since I became a mom, I have been thrust into training for a lack of sleep. <laughs> sleep deprivation is not something that's new to me, but um, you know, it's surprisingly, that seems to be the number one question that people ask. How am I gonna sleep? Do I have a sleep strategy? Um, what are my plans? Am I gonna take dirt, a dirt nap? Um, am I gonna sleep in the sleep stations? So I'll be honest, at first I was like, I, I had not given it any thought. And originally I was just going to push through and just, you know, hopefully not sleep at all. But, um, you know, the more that I have studied, the more I understand that I don't know. <laughs> so I haven't practiced like sleep deprivation necessarily like in training, like specifically, I haven't done any like overnights pushing through the night. 
Um, just Jackpot Ultra was, you know, a, a 17 hour straight effort. So that was probably like the biggest one. Um, but I am planning on sleeping. So I, I do want to take that seriously. And I think one of the things that I have to keep at the forefront in my mind is that I'm doing four of these this year and they're all kind of, you know, between just from Cocodona to Tahoe, 200, I think that's like less than six weeks. And I want to experiment in every race. I really want to learn like good strategies and, and share that with, with everyone, what I'm trying. So for this one, I do plan to sleep. And the way that I am working through that is just listening to my body. So um, I will very much sleep on the first day. I think that was probably one of the best pieces of advice that people gave me that get some type of sleep within the first 24 hours or else it'll catch up to me on day two. So. And I don't think that I'm gonna be sleeping in the sleep stations. I'm not sure I'd be able to fall asleep, but thankfully you, Eddie, are gonna be crewing me. So um, I'll just plan on, on sleeping in our car. All right, gonna do a little warm up and then we're gonna hit the gym. You can answer a question while you're doing that. <laughs> Shoot. All right, ready? <laughs> yeah. So this one's about balance. How how's the balance been? Like training for such a high mileage race with. Uh, I, thought, I thought you were gonna say like my balance, <laughs> like single leg balance, because it's pretty solid. That too. <laughs> no balance with training and family life, friends, work. How's that been? Oh man. Well, I think with every passing year, that's always something that I'm working on. It's, I don't think it's anything that I'll ever be able to perfect. I don't think I'll ever have a perfectly balanced life. And, and I knew going into this 200 that I, I was gonna be very busy. And I've been caught up in seasons in my life where I felt like, well, I can't do this because I'm too busy or I'll just wait till next year. And I, I want to, you know, always respect all the stuff I have to do, but I don't want to get caught up and just telling myself that I'm too busy. And so I do want to be good at doing the best with what I have like on that day. And so I found that instead of telling myself that I'm too busy, that focusing more on being flexible and giving myself grace and embracing real life. So, you know, in being completely candid with you, it's it's been, I've had a lot of hard days. And one of the biggest reasons is because I just finished my book like completely. And I had several days where I just couldn't train at all because I was working on the book for 12 to 14 hours a day and there were multiple times that I did that. And I was just drained emotionally, mentally. And, and then you, you tack in, you know, the kids and running a business and all the other things that, um, that I have on, on my plate. And I just made it a point to, to tell myself, this isn't quitting. This isn't like not being committed. Like this is real life. And, and every day I'm gonna do the best with what I have. In total, when I look back, I, I, I did get in a lot of really solid training. Um, and then I just had a lot of very real raw days where um, I was grinding in, in the other areas that I'm passionate about and, you know, trying to be the best mom that I can be. and finish this book. So um, one thing I will say though, is I do not recommend trying to write and publish a book <laughs> while you're training for, you know, a big effort or a big goal race. Um, that was, that was very difficult. And I, I, I think having you Eddie as my support during all of that was, was monumental. So, um, but we did it.
we're, we're at approaching the start line of our first 200 and yeah, still not perfectly balanced, but keeping it real. <laughs> All right, next question. 85, 86. If you're wondering why there's not plates on this bar, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> there's the pride coming out. <laughs> All right, so five to six months build up to this race. How's the nutrition intake been? Have you had to, have you had to increase calories to kind of go along with all those big efforts? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, overall, more calories just on a daily basis. I, I mean, I did do that, what I eat in a day, that was on a recovery day, and that was close to 3,000 calories on a recovery day. I'm not counting like macros or calories. Like I really just eat to fuel and fill my body. If I'm hungry, I eat. If, um, if I'm feeling like low energy, I'll eat. So I've definitely increased daily calories. On my long runs, I'm eating more than I ever have in the past. And a piece of that was, um, and I, I genuinely like would pr prescribe this when I was doing my private coaching to my athletes, like use your long run to practice your nutrition. I think that's just like golden. If you can stand at a start line and have your nutrition down, then you're just gonna be that much more confident because so many problems stem from our nutrition and I've been eating way more uh, like whole foods and just trying different things too. I'm glad I've practiced it because um, at first I was a little nervous about how am I going to feel? Am I going to feel heavy? Am I going to feel sick? And so there's definitely some things that haven't worked out for me, um, but overall it's, it's been, yeah, it's been high calories eating whenever I'm hungry and um, yeah, I love to eat. <laughs> All right, Sal, <laughs> during your core here, I have a question. Actually, this question is mainly my question because I'm curious about this one. So how do you mentally wrap your mind around you after mile 100 having another 150 miles left? <laughs> is what, it possible to wrap your mind around that? What do you mentally do in that moment? Um, I'm trying to wrap my mind around my core routine right now. <laughs> Sorry, this is kind of an <laughs> interruption. No, it's cool. When I signed up for the Jackpot Ultra, that was what I was chasing. I trained hard all the way up until the day of that race. Wanting to imagine that I had 150 miles on my legs and now I had to go 100 more. So even then, I think, you know, I knew that race was gonna end. I knew that it was a flat circle, a flat loop, um, much different from the train that I'll be on. But I, I think that this is what happens the further we go in ultras. There's a point where our mind takes over. You know, your body is so fatigued and it's, it wants to stop, it's tired. We all know that we're all gonna get to that point where discomfort sets in. So it's planning your reactions and knowing that the power of your reactions is what either keeps you from taking another step or propels you forward. 
fabricated discomfort, it just isn't the same as when you're in the actual moment. I'm not gonna pretend that, but I think that allowing ourselves to step out of the comfort zone in training, but also it's important to step out of the comfort zone in everyday life. And whether that's having difficult conversations, um, going the extra mile for someone else, um, those things, like what we learn in life, we absolutely apply to the trail. And I know for me personally, I've been in a lot of seasons of discomfort just in everyday life. And, you know, I'm going to apply that um, on race day for sure. So really grateful for the being able to call upon experiences I've had both in my career and just in life to know that not everything lasts forever and everything at some point comes to an end seasons change the discomfort stops and um i know that my great desire is that i that i don't stop you know not until it's time not until i cross that final finish line in my life but i don't want to quit i want to keep going and and that's the number one goal i just want to get to the finish line knowing that i gave everything that i could and that i learned a lot about myself along the way so there you go. <laughs> How many scoops should I do? I'll do one. We're gonna eat dinner here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. These kids right here. <laughs> okay, so my kids just got home. Isaiah doesn't like being on the camera, but I'm making him be on the camera. <laughs> so cute. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't. So, okay, I, I've said this before. You make the best smoothies in our family. Mm -hmm. And I wish that I would have known that I you do. Were. Will you finish my smoothie for me? Uh huh? Yes. Okay, all I did was add almond milk and one scoop of protein powder. I haven't done the rest. Put some berries in there. Okay, this guy. And Isaiah's so sweet. He'll go to make a smoothie for himself, and he always asks mom, "Do you want some smoothie?" Yeah. He always makes some smoothie. We'll make some for yourself too. Oh okay. yeah. We'll make double. Ken, do you want some too? Yeah. All right. Ed, do you want some smoothie? No thanks. Wow. See. You gotta put another scoop in there. Come on. Now. Okay. We need some more milk. We need the milk. Yeah, some more milk. <laughs> Double, double, double on the double you and W. <laughs> yeah. Look at right, that. That's good. Let's go. Look at that. This looks, this looks like a strawberry shake. Yeah. Jeez. Let's go. <laughs> mm. All right. I have one last question. It's kind of like a three part question. <laughs> okay. How much do you weigh? <laughs> okay. What are your measurements? <laughs> and can I get your number? <laughs> I love it. Well, <laughs> um, no, I actually, I, I like talking about that because I did put that information out at the beginning of the series when I did a DEXA scan and inside tracker kind of just showcasing the starting point i think it's so important oh i didn't stop my watch yet <laughs> um i think it's so important to track your progress and i like to track what's going on the inside of my body and tracking yeah if i have fat loss muscle loss um and then just the inside tracker that's checking out my blood i want to make sure that i'm healthy and i'm moving in the right direction so i actually am going to get a dexa scan right before the race um, see how things have changed with my body during this whole entire um, buildup in training. And then after the race, I'm gonna get another DEXA scan because I'm really curious to see, um, you know, it, what I've done to my body after that race. So thank you for watching and hanging out with me this whole time. It's been super fun. The community has been growing and really appreciate just the kind words and the comments and the questions that come in. Um, yeah, that means a lot to me and hopefully I'll get to meet some of you guys sometime. But for now, I am going to change and take a Mackenzie out to buy a prom dress, get some dinner. So on to part five of my day. <laughs>
We'll see you next week. <laughs>